Welcome to a tour of your computer. This tutorial is designed for computers using Windows 10 operating system, but many things can apply to previous Windows versions. In this video, we will cover some very basic computer terms, show you where to find commonly used items, and how to perform often used procedures. This video is useful for those just starting out with computers, and those wanting to pick up basic skills they may have missed along the way in order to increase their computer knowledge for a job or personal use. Relax and have fun while learning. Be sure to practice the skills regularly to keep them fresh in your mind. Let's get started. Once you have logged into your computer using your username and password, you will see a screen that looks something like this. This display is called your desktop. It includes a picture or design in the background with icons on top and a taskbar along the bottom. You can think of it like the top of an actual desk you are working at. The tasks you are working on will be placed on top of this screen. Icons are like buttons to start a program or tool, such as Microsoft Word, a calculator, or a web browser that you want to use. A program is essentially a tool that helps you complete a task or tasks, such as word processing, creating a spreadsheet, or searching the internet. To activate a program or tool, double-click on the icon. A double-click is two quick clicks of the left button on your mouse. Be careful! If your clicks aren't fast enough or close enough together, the computer won't recognize it as a double-click and your program won't open. Also, be aware that sometimes programs take a little longer to open than you might expect. Be patient! If a program doesn't open after a minute or more, however, that may indicate a problem. The taskbar holds icons that you may commonly use, ones actually in use, or ones that Microsoft or your computer manufacturer think you may use. To start a program or tool in the taskbar, click once on the icon with your left mouse button. Next to your taskbar, in the lower left hand corner of your screen, there is a picture of a window. This is your start button and it will open your start menu. This is an important button because it gives you access to many more programs than are usually displayed by the icons on your desktop. We will only be going over the basics in this video. Click once with your left mouse button on the Start button. This will display the Start menu. In the Start menu, you will see a variety of options. The menu options are Most Used Programs, File Explorer, Settings, Power, and All Apps. The Most Used section shows the programs or tools that you have used the most. This makes it easier to find those programs you often use. To open one of the programs, click once with your left mouse button on the program. By clicking once on the right pointing caret of the program name, you will get a submenu that shows the most recent files you have made with that program. This is called a jump list because you can skip a bunch of steps and jump right to the file you want. You can click on one of those files to open it. If 
File Explorer is an extremely important feature that you will need to know how to use. It will come into play in any task you are doing that involves files. Files include things like word process documents, spreadsheets, and photos that you've saved. Click once with your left mouse button on File Explorer. You should see something like this. At the top, you will find various menus and submenus. At the left, you will see a list of items, and on the right, you will see a larger area of items. This is where you will work with your files and file folders. Think of it as a very large file cabinet. It works in much the same way. More on using File Explorer will be covered in other videos. For now, just be aware of how to get to it and what it is used for. Back at the Start menu, another option is Settings. These are options for setting up various functions and displays on your computer. This also will be covered in more detail in other videos. Our next option on the Start menu is Power. The submenu that comes up gives you three options. Sleep, shut down, and restart. The sleep option will send your computer into power saving mode. It is used when you won't be using your computer for a while, but you don't want to turn it off completely. In this mode, you can leave your programs and work open. When you push the power button on your computer again to wake the computer, the display will be as you left it. Always, always, always save your work before you send your computer to sleep. You should also save your work often as you are working on it to prevent loss in case of power failure or problems with the program. Directions on how to save your work will be covered in other videos that teach you how to use various programs. The shutdown option will turn the computer off completely. All programs will close and any unsaved work will be lost. Restart is the same as the shutdown option, but the computer will automatically start back up again. This option is often used when programs or program updates are being put on your computer. Restart can also be useful if your computer is not working properly. Sometimes a restart will clear the problem. All apps is the last option on our start menu. This gives you a list of all the programs available on your computer. They are listed in alphabetical order. To access a program, click once with the left mouse button on the program. Back out on the desktop, next to the Start button, you will find a search box. You can use this to search the items on your computer or find something on the internet. For example, if I want to do a search on snow, I would type that in. As I start to type, a screen will come up showing me options on my computer. Across the top of that screen, you can click on various buttons to choose what type of item you are looking for with the word or words you've typed in. So I can look at Apps, Settings, Documents, Folders, Photos, Videos, Music, or the Web. In the lower right hand corner of your desktop, are some other useful and important tools. Clicking once on the caret symbol gives you access to a variety of items on your computer. One important option in that menu is the option to safely remove and eject media. 
If you have a device that you connect to your computer on which you store files, such as a USB drive or external hard drive, at some point you will want to remove it from your computer to take it somewhere else. It is best to use the safely remove and eject media option. Click once on the button and click once on the device you want to eject. When the computer says it's safe to remove the device, go ahead and unplug it. The button next to the caret symbol gives you options and information about your internet access. This button allows you to control how loud your speakers are. Just pull the slider up or down to adjust the volume, or even mute them altogether. The last item in the lower right hand corner of your screen is the time and date. Clicking once with the left mouse button on the time and date will bring up a screen that allows you to view a calendar or set your computer's time and date. There are a few more items that you should be familiar with when working with your computer. We will go over those now. Almost everything you do on a computer involves the use of screen displays called windows. Unlike the desktop display, these windows can be moved around, resized, collapsed, and otherwise manipulated. Let's open up a few programs to work with. Each time we do, we have a separate window. You can also have more than one window open for the same program. There are several ways to work with windows. If you want to close a window, simply click once with the left mouse button on the X in the upper right corner of the window. To move a window out of your way without closing it entirely, use the minimize button. This is useful when you are still working with that window, but need to work on another window for a time. This is like putting a task to one side on an actual desk while you have another task right in front of you that you are working on. The first task is still easily available, but out of the way. The button between the minimize button and the close button is also extremely useful. When a window is full size, it is taking up your whole screen. You may also have other windows open underneath. Now how do you get to those other open windows? You can either get them out of the taskbar, or you can hit the Restore Down Maximize button. This makes the window on top a bit smaller and allows you to move it to one side and click on another window underneath. Clicking on another window brings it to the top, like shuffling papers on a desk. To make a window full screen, click once on the Restore Down Maximize button. When a window is less than full screen, you can pull on it at any edge or corner to make it the size you want. To do so, Put your mouse over the edge or corner of the window. When the mouse turns to a double-headed arrow, you can stretch or shrink the window. Click and hold your left mouse button while moving the edge of the window in the direction you want. Let up on the mouse button when you get it the size you want. If you do this on a corner of the window, you can change both the length and the height of the window at the same time. To move a window to one side, put your mouse in the title bar, click and hold the left mouse button and drag the window where you want it. Then release the mouse button. This technique is called click and drag. 
Throughout this tutorial, you were often instructed to click or double-click the left mouse button. Most of the time, you will use the left mouse button. So if someone says click or double-click on something, it can be assumed they mean the left mouse button. If you click once on something with the right mouse button, sometimes a menu of options will come up. Now you should be familiar with the general layout of frequently used portions of your computer. Feel free to review this tutorial often to help you get the material cemented in your memory. Computers are useful and can be fun. They can also cause frustration, but don't let that stop you. Often frustrating experiences are good learning opportunities. I know you can do this. Keep learning and practice lots. Don't forget to have fun!